Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously a boy named Wong was born with unimaginable power and decided to hide his power forever. His parents then give him an amulet and a pill to suppress his power. Later, a girl named Yoshiko joins the school aiming to be the top student by overtaking Sunro. The guys then find an injured unicorn and name him Sylvie after saving him. They eventually defeat Tang once and for all and make sure he never shows up at Hago's family's mountain again. The story continues with Yoshiko's statistical popularity rising much higher than last time. She makes a grand entrance once again, but most of the students are fawning over the adorable Sylvie. Froggy has his sights set on Sylvie as he curses the humans for not realizing what a valuable beast he is. He goes invisible and prepares to hunt Sylvie, thinking about how his blood will be full of spiritual power. Wong then stomps Froggy to the ground. He makes a protective circle around Sylvie and takes Froggy away as the dog frantically apologizes for his actions. Yoshiko is near a bush and keeping her eyes on this whole situation. As Wong takes Froggy away, she finds the perfect opportunity to get her hands on Sylvie. She begins to tiptoe towards the beast, talking about how valuable Sylvie is and how unicorn blood is a priceless treasure. She accidentally steps on the magical circle that Wong had drawn, which blasts her away in a big explosion. The school is back to petting Sylvie, surrounding the beast with food and treats. Professor Zihang approaches with a sour face, explaining how it was against the school rules to bring a spiritual beast as a pet. He then walks right in front of the beast, and upon seeing how cute Sylvie is, he can't help but start petting it. Yoshiko watches from a distance and sees that there was no way she was getting Sylvie without some underhanded methods. She then uses some red grain bolluses and baits Sylvie into eating them. After some time, Sylvie grows enormous, towering as high as the school's building, and starts to feast on the trees. Despite his growth, Sylvie is still very much the same playful unicorn, so he starts to do what any pet would, jump around the space. Due to Sylvie's immense size, the school property starts to face a lot of material damage. Professor Zi Hang asks the students to be tolerant of Sylvie's behavior since he is an ancient spiritual beast living in their time. Just as he says this, Sylvie begins to excrete on top of him, leaving him a dirty mess. After this incident, Hago and the gang are forced to keep Sylvie inside the gym. They plan to deprive him of food for some time and let him go back to his normal size. They start to think about why Sylvie grew so rapidly in the first place, but no one is able to come up with a decent answer. As such, they have no choice but to lock him inside the gym. The doors close from the outside and immediately after that, Yoshiko appears right beside Sylvie. He is wary of her but doesn't get time to react as she uses an artifact to try and help him evolve to the third phase. Before the effects can be seen, Sylvie snatches the artifact from her hand and swallows it whole. Frustrated, Yoshiko and her guards comedically gang up on Sylvie, who seems to be undergoing some kind of change nonetheless. Wong and Hago are on their way back to the gym when they see Sylvie, bursting out of the gym roof, bigger than the school itself. His small voice has now turned into roars, and he begins to take huge leaps across the city. Sylvie goes straight there, much more aggressive and hostile than his previous form. Yi and his subordinates show up to try and stop the beast, hoping to execute him altogether. Hago gets in the way though and begs him to spare his pet, painting Sylvie to be a harmless creature. His defense is short-lived as Sylvie bites Hago's head and swallows him whole. Wong sees the chaos and takes off the ribbon from Froggy's neck, letting him take his actual form of a giant frog. Wong commands Froggy's movements and waits patiently as Sylvie jumps right inside Froggy's stomach. Most of Sylvie's spiritual energy is absorbed inside there and Froggy then spits him out in his smaller form along with the gemstone artifact. Sometime later in a flashback scene, we see that Wong is at a market with his guardian. He takes a liking to a sword but doesn't get time to fully examine it as they walk away from the merchant. Back in the present time, Wong, Chen, and Hago, along with a few other students, are inside a theater recalling a play. The play is about samurai swordsmen in ancient times where a lone samurai takes on multiple goons and fights her way out of a tough situation. Chen tells Hago that he definitely made that story up and it is most probably baseless. Chen and Wong then get called onto the stage and the referee asks both of them to draw their swords. Chen takes out a huge metal sword and points it at Wong as he prepares for the duel. Wong on the other hand takes out a small wooden sword. Chen asks him if that is really what he's using and if he couldn't have brought something better. He warns Wong that he might break his little sword and can't be held responsible for the expenses. The whistle is blown and Chen wastes no time running straight towards Wong, taking a high jump and swinging his sword vertically with full force. Wong's sword then begins to glow and he begins to block every single one of Chen's high speed attacks. The force of Wong's sword is so rapid that it bends Chen's metal sword as he watches with a disturbed expression. Wong then completely destroys Chen's sword and tosses it across the stage. 
Chen cries over his sword and unofficially admits defeat as Wang complains to his sword about using too much force. Nearby, Sun Ro is having a hard time controlling her swords as she accidentally launches them toward Wang. In a blitz, Wang manages to grab all her swords mid-air as all of them get attached to his wooden sword and they fall on the ground as a cluster. Chen tries to pull out the wooden sword from the chaotic mess but is unable to move it. Lin then explains that Wang's sword might be in the awakening stage. An awakening stage is when the sword starts to go through different spiritual changes and becomes much wilder in nature. Since they have no idea how to separate the swords through conventional methods, Lin proposes that they should all come with her to the sword tomb. They all head to a barren land full of abandoned swords. Wang casually carries the cluster of swords on his back as he walks with the group. Sun Ro asks if this was the place where Lin grew up and she responds positively. She tells him that her sister will be able to fix the swords with ease. They head inside a small hut where Lin's sister is sitting beside the fireplace. She overhears a bunch of people at the door and walks outside to greet her sister and her friends. Lin introduces her sister and Chen immediately asks her to fix his sword. Lin's sister then invites all of them inside her workroom. She strikes Chen's sword once with a small hammer and assures him that it will be fine shortly after. Wang prepares to show his problem but somehow manages to pull his wooden sword out which then flies across the room and goes to Lin's sister. She explains the awakening phase and mentions how she had not seen a sword with such magnetic force before. Yi enters the room as they speak and asks what the students were doing there. He mentions that he was also there to have his sword fixed and talks about the swordsman in white who recently showed up in Songhai. As such, his squad was deployed to deal with her and all of them ended up bending their swords severely. He then explains that the swordsman in white is exceptionally talented and capable of attracting swords to her, after which she would then bend them. Yi gets a call about yet another sighting of the swordsman in white but finds himself in a dilemma as his squad is not battle ready. The students propose to fight on his behalf, assuring him that they are more than ready. Outside the Songhai Antique Market, the swordsman in white has a bunch of ninjas beat by bending their swords. Realizing that they are unable to beat her, the group decides to retreat. The students then launch a collective attack on her with Sunro going on the offensive while Hago tries to take her by surprise. Lin joins the fray and the three of them begin to fight against her. Wang tries to get his sword back hoping to help his friends but the wooden sword refuses to go back to him. Lin's sister gives the sword some encouraging words and in the meantime the student group gets beaten. The white swordsman then goes for Lin's sister and Wang's spiritual sword changes to his human form deflecting the incoming attack. The white swordsman then realizes the wooden sword is their sibling. Wang takes this chance to grab the wooden sword and seal both of the siblings inside of it once and for all. Later, Yi looks agitated as he chases a bunch of hooded individuals inside a moving train. A person with white hair takes notice of the action unfolding and looks fairly amused. The bandits then separate one of the trailers, successfully escaping from Yi. He calls the headquarters to notify them that the most valuable item in the auction has been stolen. The white haired guy calls out to Yi and he identifies the person to be Lord Thunder. He then takes out a gourd covered in chains and asks Yi if that's the item he was looking for. We then see that the bandits try to present the item to their leader. Instead, they take out an explosive as the trailer bursts and goes into flames. Thunder and Yi regroup later at the auction as Yi thanks him for the crucial assistance. Thunder then tells him that he is at the auction with the intention of bidding whereas Yi makes his position as a guard clear. Elsewhere, Wong is playing a card game with a bunch of kids and then gets defeated quite easily as his opponent summons a sixth armed gorilla. Meanwhile, the auction is on the verge of its initiation as all the great families start to gather and take their seats. The first item on the lot is a remnant of a heavenly book with a starting bid of 1 million spiritual coins. The bids keep increasing from 1.5 to 3 and all the way to 3.6 million. Yi is shocked by the weight of the money and finally understands why they call it the number one auction in the world. Thunder explains that the remnant is from the legendary Forbidden Spellbook and the book shared a brief history with the Sunro and Tang families. As such, they are the ones taking charge of the bidding. Yi asks why Thunder was not bidding and he tells him he had no interest in the book itself while flinging his fan which has the word poor written on it. Wong is still with the kids trying his luck by opening ramen packets in hopes to find stronger trading cards. The auction continues with the next item being long johns. Thunder explains to Yi that there are no ordinary long johns though. Just then a girl fires multiple rounds of an assault rifle at the pants with not a single of the bullets penetrating it. The initial bid starts at 5 million but Yoshiko takes the final bid with 16 million spiritual coins. 
Meanwhile, Wong has already went through an entire box of dried noodles without a single one of them having a proper trading card. Back at the auction, the moment finally arrives as the host prepares to unveil the most valuable item for the auction. She takes her time to explain the history behind it, about how it was stolen and retrieved in time by Yi's squad. The item is called Sealed White-Eyed Blue Dragon, and everyone is taken aback by the announcement. Once again, Thunder begins to clarify to Yi, explaining that the gourd is an omnipotent artifact capable of fulfilling any wish. The starting bid for the artifact starts at 10 million spiritual coins. Immediately after this, Yoshiko makes a bid of 15 million, which is overtaken by the Tang family with a bid of 16 million. The back and forth starts with both sides making bids of 20 million, which soon reaches 30 with the Tang family showing no signs of backing down. The bid keeps increasing, but the whole place goes silent when Yoshiko makes a bid of 40 million spiritual coins. Just when it seems like she's gonna take it for good, Thunder makes a bid of 45 million, much to Yi's surprise. Yi then gets a random call, after which he makes the winning bid of 87 million. The call is from Wang who had been watching on TV, and so the sealed dragon is sold to Yi. He then makes his way to Wang to deliver the item, and Thunder closely follows him. Still, Thunder is fairly confident about the safety of the gourd as he thinks he is the only one who knows how to break the seal. Much to his surprise, Wong stomps the gourd and breaks literally everything. Out of the gourd comes a dragon who tells Wong that he may ask for anything. Wong then turns the dragon itself into a trading card, finally adding a strong one to his collection. Thanks for watching part 11, all other parts will be in a link comment below.